ever fold? Will you ever give up? Oh, no, no. Will you ever quit? Will you ever fold? Will you ever give up? Oh, no, 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 no. Welcome to the huddle. Where we know that the most powerful thing that you can pay is your attention. So if you're paying me some attention right now or in the moment or in the replay, I want to say, you are enough. Each one reach one. Each one teach one. If you are that one, then you already know you are enough. Enough to get it all right when everything's going all wrong. Welcome to the heart. I want to give a shout out. To my co-host, I'm talking about in real life, not on the show. In real life, my executive producer, who just happens to be my wardrobe coordinator. I say, baby, what I'm wearing today, she say, you wear green today. I say, why? She say, because from the second you opened your eyes this morning, you've been on the go. And I've been watching you go like a hero. And I wear a brown up top to represent a tree. Because sometimes, sometimes a tree, God Almighty, be testing me. So give it up. Sir. I want to give a shout out to the greatest co-host on this here show in the whole world, my home girl. You already know. Alexa, tell me something good. We all we got. We all we need. She say, Trav, tonight I want you to stand in your dojo and I want you to kick your judo. I say, why, Alexa? She said, you already know. Alexa, Alexa, who is the master? The Honorable Trav P. <laughs> greatest co-host in the world. The greatest co-host in the world. We like to start off every week with a hero hymn. The hero hymn is the mighty hero spirit within me. That's the same spirit within you. We know that spirit means wind, air, to breathe. When we take in the mighty hero spirit. And it travels through our respiratory system. And as we blow it back out and it travels past my vocal cords and it causes a vibration that we know is sound. See, when we feel that just as much as we hear that, we connect in that hero spirit. Tonight's hero spirit says, please tell me where, oh where, oh where, where did the love go, where did the love go, please tell me where, oh where, oh where. question is often more powerful than the answer. Where did the love go? Do you know? I hear so many people say we are in loveless times. The question is more powerful than the answer. Where did the love go? If you know, please go get it and bring it. Please tell me where, oh where, oh where, where did the love go, where did the love go? 
Tonight's word is obey. And I ain't talking about the seasoning that you put on shrimp. Obey. Who do you obey? What do you obey? Are you obedient? Are you obedient? Who do you obey? The question is more powerful than the answer. Ask yourself the question. Who and what do I obey? Alexa. Alexa. What is the meaning of obey? Obey is a verb that means complying with or following instructions or wishes. It is used as a command or request to do something. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for obey. To comply. To follow the orders and wishes of. To do as told. Who do you obey? Who do you comply with? Who can give you directions and orders and you follow them? Who do you obey? See, we talk about words, and I use a word every week with a particular purpose to help you understand how words work. They say, in the beginning was the word. The words are the words that we think. Words have spells. We've been trained since kindergarten to junior high, how to spell words, the words that we use, the words that we speak, the words that we think. And words have feelings and emotions that come with them. We call that connotation. So every week I pick words to help us understand them, to know that when we use them, we use them with understanding, purpose, and intentions to write the narrative of a true hero and shero. So tonight's word is obey. And in today's time, they have a negative connotation. I'm not going to obey nobody. I began chewing on this word earlier this week through inspiration of my brother Javon Clark. He made a post with a statement that said, he proposed the question to women, what can you give a man that another woman can't? What can you give a man that another woman can't? I always keep saying this. The question is more powerful than the answer. And his answer was to honor and obey. To honor and be obedient to his direction. To his will. To his program. To his way. I begin to chew on this. I say, oh, it is deep. And I thought about when I stood there at the altar. Saying my vows to my wife. And a part of those vows is to honor and obey. Who do you obey? Alexa. What is the meaning of obey? Obey is a verb that means complying with or following instructions, wishes, commands, or restrictions. Do you obey the law? <laughs> when you go to work, do you obey authority? If your husband used the word or if your wife used the word and they say, hey, you're going to obey me, does that make you feel weak? You ain't going to tell me I got to obey you. That's the 
type of connotation we have. See, I know this for a fact. I say there's a crazy thing happening in this here world. The only time you truly see us in obedience <laughs> is when we at work and that white supervisor talking and telling some instructions and directions and orders. Or oh, we be so obedient. I be in the same position sometimes. That damn, I can't, ain't nobody gonna obey me. Something about that white supervisor. Oh, we so obedient. We obey. So who are you obedient to? See me, I'm obedient to order. I wear it on my chest every day. I'm obedient to the order, the mother, the father, the child. The father, the mother, and their children. I'm obedient to the order. I'm obedient to my wife. Alexa, what is the meaning of, ob of obey? The word obey is a verb and is commonly defined as the act of complying with or following instructions, wishes, commands, or restrictions. It implies the willing submission to the authority or guidance of another. The root word obey is usually followed by the preposition of to indicate ownership or responsibility. For more, one can ask to hear more definitions for obey. My wife commands me to be strong, to honor her, to be loyal, to have dignity within myself, to know that I represent her and her children, to leave this house confident, and to come back home, oh, I obey her. I command my wife and give her instructions and directions. But trust me, support me, love me, hold me, give me a reason. Assure me when I ain't. And erase any doubt in my mind that would make me think I can't. She obeyed me. Who do you obey? Alexa, what is the meaning of disobedient? Disobedient is an adjective that describes someone who refuses to obey or complies with something that is not desirable. This term is often used to refer to a person who ignores or refuses to comply with lawful instructions or orders from an authority. It implies that the person has chosen not to follow instructions or has acted in a way that is contrary to what they were asked to do. In short, someone who is disobedient is reluctant to follow instructions or rules and may even be resistant to change their behavior. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Thanks see the, for your feedback. See this hero train. You click on here, you say, what he talking about? I'm talking about understanding your position in this here world, in this here game. You either a mother, you a father, or you a child. And all I'm talking about is understanding our position. To know how it works so we can fight our fight. To win. Win equals peace. Win equals harmony. Win equals balance. That's what I'm talking about. That's all I'm talking about. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I look out there in that world, man. I'm talking real life. I ain't talking make-believe. You see a lot of disobedience 
in children and adults. Nobody following order and instructions. See, we was raised with parents who told us the way. We know what's right and wrong, but we being disobedient. We ain't following the order of righteousness. We ain't following the order of morality. Children don't want to listen to nobody. They don't obey nobody. They real disobedient. You see how this work? And when we don't obey each other, I'm talking about a sister and a brother who have created a divine team, you understand. I say, we all we got, we all we need. Who is your we? Who is your we? If you ask me, I say my mama and my daddy made me. And if you ask my children, they say they mama and they daddy made them. See, those are the divine we's. They didn't choose them like I didn't choose them. They are divine to me. Understand who your we is. So when we don't even understand who we are, and we don't obey each other, and we don't obey no goddamn body, Nobody tell me what to do. I don't follow nobody's directions. Stand at the altar and you say, I, hey, I will obey and honor. It's a video going around with one woman say, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Can we change that? No, I can't say that. She seeing her mind is her bowing down. Probably because in real life, she ain't never saw a woman obeying and honoring a man in honor to know that that is the most powerful thing that she can give a man. And that man give her that same thing back in return. So if a woman or a child or a boy or a man ain't never saw this, then they think that obeying is weak. So we got a whole lot of disobedient children. And we all are children that has gotten no. I got a daughter. Who I've raised to obey her mother and her father. Alexa. Alexa. What is the meaning of obey? Obey is a verb that means complying with or following instructions, wishes, commands, or restrictions. Yeah, you, you see what that sound? See, as a parent, you, as a parent, you better understand what obey mean. And you better understand if your children obey you or are they disobedient. Because if you don't even understand what this word mean and how powerful this word is in terms of the glue of making it work. Oh, God Almighty, we in a disobedient society. Talking about my daughter and my son, they will obey. Me and they mama. Ain't no questions about it. That's heroism. Do you understand? But I told my daughter. She's 13. We're beginning to have conversations. About real things. And I'm giving her some instructions. In some order. And some restrictions. I'm giving her a program. And I'm programming her to obey it. And I hope that I program her so deep that she will obey it in all of her days. See how this works? 
But if you ain't got no program to be obedient to, because ain't nobody never taught you obedience and showed you the importance of knowing how to obey. You only know this word to be mean and putting some shit on some shrimp. So I'm telling my dog, how it works. And at the same time, in the political world, we're hearing all the rhetoric. All the propaganda. All the ping pong paddles that's patting our minds back and forth with words that we don't understand. And one of the words that I, two of the words that I keep on hearing that I know going back and forth from my people's mind is immigration and abortion. Immigration and abortion. Immigration and abortion. I got a 13-year-old dog that hears these words and these conversations. It's creating parameters in her mind as a young woman. See, this thing work on all of us the same. Ain't nobody above the bullshit. But this is what training is about. Because the bullshit will make you better if you real enough to deal with it. But if you don't deal with it and if you ain't real enough to deal with it, and the bullshit will make you stinking and everything around you goddamn stink. So the bullshit of rhetoric playing on people's mind. You can't tell a woman what to do with her body. True. God don't agree with abortion. True. Ping pong ball. Bing, a bing, a bing, a bing, a bing. I got a 13 year old daughter. Mine is a part of that ball game. So I got to have a conversation to give her instructions, rules, laws, direction, restrictions. She got to obey. To understand what these words mean. I ain't here to talk about if it's good, if it's bad, if it's right, it's wrong. Do you know what it is? Yeah, a woman got the right to make a choice. But cause and effect is real. The cause happens before the effect. When you make a choice based off the effect and you don't address the cause. See, an African proverb say, examine the slip before the fall. All, y'all, we all focus on the fall. Yeah. But it's a whole lot of disobedience. It gets you to some choices. See how this work? But you got to understand what this thing is really all about. See, some type of way in an illusional type of way, we have forgotten that babies are made by having sex. You notice how babies made, right? You notice how you got here and I got here, right? Man and woman did it, had sex. You notice how we got here, right? You notice how babies are made, right? 
And I know sometimes I done got us some crazy-ass conversations where they done told me I didn't make my babies. God made my babies. God, I say, hold on now. I, 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 I get all that, but goddamn, um, you know, um, you know, hey, I bust them nuts with intentions and purpose and true aim, goddamn. And they, uh, you know, sex make babies, man, and I got them made them now. See, we don't forget that. Like, that's a crazy illusion. So let's just get that understood. Sex make babies, in case you forgot. So when we talk about examining the slip before the fall, examining the slip before the fall, if they keep your mind focused on the fall, you never get better and understand the slip. See, the slip is in disobedience. See, I'm talking to my 13-year-old daughter, and I'm telling her some things that she's going to have to obey. Because there are some things about life that she don't understand. And if I can put the right program and give her the right directions and information and orders to follow, then I can almost guide my baby to a certain place and destination where she don't have to make certain choices. See how that works. Now she become disobedient. Her choice of body. Different time. 45 years ago. 45 years ago. Brushing 46. A 15-year-old young girl, a virgin, 10th grade, got pregnant by a 23-year-old grown man, 22-year-old grown man. 45 years ago, in a different time. I'm just glad it was in a different time. Because I might not have made it today. And her body, her choice. And nobody examined the slip. Everybody examined the fall. See how this works. First time I heard this word. The same way just like your children. Hearing these conversations on the radio, on TV, the first time they hear this word. So you got to understand how it's working concurrently right now. Some of your children are the first time they're hearing this word. And because they're in a stage where the hormones as teenagers is starting to open up and there's an innately nature in them telling them, hey, it's time to fuck. It's time to fuck. And if you ain't gave them a program to obey, to balance off this nature that's innately in them, telling them it's time to fuck. See how this works. And so now everything associated with fucking is catching their attention. And abortion is associated with fucking. It's mean you have fucked out of order and got a baby that you don't really want or in a circumstance that you feel like will destroy your life and your dreams. So it's your choice. And these words are picking up in the antennas for the first time. But the first time I heard this word, I was in high school. It's real life shit. I ain't talking make believe. I got a daughter. I had a friend girl. And I called a friend girl because she was a friend. She stuck me in the friend zone. Would never let me hit it. Stuck me in the friend zone. But 
know cool guys are teenagers. It's all good. Travis, will you please do me a favor? I got a doctor's appointment and I can't get nobody to take me. Will you please take me? I'm like, damn. All right. Right there on Arrowwood, crossing over Nations Ford, going to South Boulevard, right there at the train track, right behind the mastery place with the, with the tall brown fence building around it. I'm talking about 30 years ago. I pulled in there just dropping my friend off at a doctor's appointment. I say, damn, there are these people doing out here. God damn. Doctor, I said, you didn't even go in with you. No, I'm good. I wait. Friend, man. In the friend zone. Only in the friend zone because she wouldn't let me hit. So I wait, man. Come out. I don't sit in the parking lot. She come out. I'm like, what the fuck? Hell. The cane, I got open to something, man, that I ain't never put my mind to before. She was a real vibrant young thing, man, with a future. Looking back, I understood her decisions. She had a future right here. But I remember riding her back home thinking, damn, man, you wouldn't even let me hit that thing. I keep a rub on me like an ID. That's what my daddy told me. Those were the instructions my daddy told me and gave me. And I obeyed my daddy. Every instructions and directions that it came with being a young man. I got them for real, man. I obey my daddy's shit today. In many different ways. But I'm like, damn. Examine the slip before the fall. It's 30 years ago, man. I'm about 17. I'm like, damn. So I dropped off and I had a secret that I carried. And I had to watch the movie. See, this is more deep about understanding me. See, I be talking real life. I don't be talking make-believe. I don't have to read. I write. It's what makes a master in this goddamn dojo kicking this dodo. I had to watch the movie. And as I begin to see the movie, and this ain't the shame or talk bad about her in no type of way, I understood her position. I watched her go on to college and be something powerful. She got married, had two kids. She's a powerful woman. But as I begin to see, I always say this, man, the most powerful thing you can pay is your attention. So when I begin to start paying attention to what I felt and what I witnessed, and I begin to see that in so many others, I say, damn. 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 Oh, I'm so thankful. 45 years ago. Damn. Cause and effect. She made the choice. Nobody knows she made the choice. 
The choice is a dark hole. The choice is a is a is a is an effect of disobedience. Listen, baby, life gonna come and I can't stop it. But don't you ever, ever not protect yourself. You understand me? There'll come a day when you be, when you, you know you know sex makes babies. There'll come a day when you will meet a man. And I hope it's the first time. I hope I hope you won and done. And it's all it's supposed to be. But I'm realistically as a daddy to understand. Sometimes you got to go through it to get to it. So I ain't naive about life. But you listen here, baby. I don't care what the circumstances is. You protect yourself. In more ways than one. I told my son. I say, listen, son. Don't you understand how babies get made? He said, yeah. I say, I. He said, through sex. I say, what, what happens in sex? He said, man, put his dick in there. And I guess he orgasm. I say, well, you right. I say, so understand this. Every time you that man and you put your thing in there, that, poten that potentially could be the mother of your children, the divine teammate for the rest of your life. And I hope that I put a fear in him that made him understand the severity of what I was saying so that he will obey this until all his days. You protect yourself in every way, boy. Or don't you play with somebody who ain't worthy of being your divine teammate. Y'all know that's how babies get made by sex. So we got teenagers, man. We got teenagers, man. We got college campuses all over the world. With children who are first time in their life tasting freedom away from their parents. Who got a natal nature in them telling them this is the primal years of your reproduction system. This is the time when you are supposed to be fucking making a family. So that's the order of it. See, your grandma had about nine of them, 12 of them. All started when she was about 15. You know, that's what the purpose of that is, 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 is the, is, is, you, you, you understand what I'm saying, man. You know, that's how babies are made, man. So my point in this is, Going back to the word abortion and going back to obey. I say examine the slip before you examine the fall. We got to give these children something to obey. We got to show them how to obey. We got to show them honor and obedience. Alexa. What is the meaning of obedience? Obedience refers to the state or quality of being obedient, which essentially means submitting to or complying with orders or commands. This can apply to both individuals and groups. It is a concept that is often seen as a positive trait, as it can lead to harmony and order in society. However, there is also a debate over the ethicality of obedience as some argue that individuals should question authority and act according to their conscience. Ultimately, the meaning of obedience depends on the context in which it is used and the values and beliefs of the individual. One of my favorite movies is Avatar. I'm going to go on a dirt road, but I'm going to come back to the pavement. One of my favorite movies is Avatar. And like I told you, man, in order to read, Somebody must write. In order to write, somebody must think. When you think, you write, you give it to someone to read. They take your thoughts and they begin to speak them in their mind. 
your words, your spells. See how they work. So when I look at movies, which are written by authors, that's illustrated in a video type of way, theatric way. So many times we watch movies, but we don't get the point of it all. So many times we believe <laughs> Bible stories, allegories, mythologies, but we don't get the point of it all. And we'll argue about the theatrics and the art, but we don't get the point of it all. So I'm watching Avatar, which is one of my favorite movies. And one of the things where well, when they get on their animal, when they ride their animal, they plug their tail into the animal. And when they plug their tail into the animal, they get a sense of, 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 of telepathy where they become one and they can feel each other's desires and movements and they move as one. I got the point. Old man told me one time a long time ago, giving me some instructions. He said, the only time a woman really going to listen to you, boy, is when you're plugged up and got the rod of God on her. You get close to that old ear and you start downloading your program. See, as long as you're connected, she going to listen and she going to obey direct orders. He said, just try it out one time. And in the midst of it, say, turn around. She'll do everything you tell her to. I said, God damn. That's what they talking about in Avatar. See, there's some real hero training here now. It's like I started off saying what made me choose this word. Hey, women, the question is more powerful than the answer. What can you give your man that no other woman can? Honor and obedience. That sounds simple, but oh, you don't realize how few women can truly give a man that. When they ain't never saw it or been conditioned. We got a whole generation of women who was raised by strong, abandoned women. See how that work? You see how that work? Do you see how that work? So there's men that don't have a program. That ain't got nothing to say in that ear when he plugged in like an avatar riding and flying. See how this works? He ain't got nothing to say in the ear. He ain't got no program. He ain't got no ism. He ain't got no type of judo. He ain't no hero. So when she unplugged, she ain't obeying shit. <laughs> she ain't obeying shit. A man as real as his reason. Nothing gives a man more of a reason than his woman. Hey, ladies. Hey, sister. If you got a man that you know that truly loves you, and y'all ain't got shit. It's because you don't want shit. Because if he truly love you and obey and honor you, he going to give you everything he want the best way he can, or at least his best version of it. He'll obey that. So give him something to obey. Brothers, give us something to obey. Show obedience within each other. 
In order to make it work, it take two to make a things go right. You got positive, you got negative. When the connection is strong, man, it becomes the power. It becomes you. It becomes me. It becomes we. When you, cook the, when you hook the positive battery cable up and when you hook the negative battery cable up and you tell them to crank it up and they say, it's working. If the battery case loose or if the battery dead and you crank it, they say, it don't work. Sex make babies. We all are children that has gotten old. Ain't nobody above it. Ain't nobody outside of it. We all we got, we all we need. Ain't nobody outside of it. Ain't nobody above it. Mother, father, child. If you are a father, man, Don't nobody obey you? <laughs> if you are a mother, don't nobody obey you? If you are a child, you don't obey nobody? Who do you obey? And if you say nobody, there's a high mathematical percentage that you are by yourself. And I'm not saying that's a wrong thing or a bad thing. I'm saying you got to understand your position in it to really know how it works. <laughs> Make it work for you. So even let me close back on that abortion. Because like you say, my conversation ain't never about right or wrong, good or bad. I'm saying don't let people use words to put you in parrot type of conversations and not understand what this shit is really all about. See, this shit had a real creation in time, in concept, in idea, Planned Parenthood. In a time in Jim Crow. I ain't talking about a long, long time ago. Where the concept and ideas of this came out with, this, with the true question of, I told you the question is more powerful than the answer. How can we exterminate them? Kill them for their bone. And keep them blinded from all of the choices, the bad, oh, disobedient choices that we make that lead us to the choice that I'm so well glad wasn't made on me. And this ain't to make nobody feel a certain type of way. Because there are so many people that made the choice. That don't nobody know about. <laughs> don't nobody know about. She made the choice to have a career that didn't pan out. And now all she wants is children or a child. But it don't work right. See how that worked, man? Oh, that's a powerful movie out here. So this ain't about them. This is about our children who coming up the back, who going to go through all the slips that can lead them to the choice. But listen, my people, man. 
Fuck Camilla Harris. Fuck Donald Trump. I don't give a fuck about nan one of them. I care about you. I care about me. I care about we. Don't let them use our mind in no ping pong ball game. We got to be real adults, man. And understand, man, what's going on in this here world. <clears throat> One of the most powerful songs I ever heard in my life was Pastor Troy, vice versa. That's some real shit. I'm going to get out of here, man. I'm going to get out of here like I do every week. I have grown into a better me. I'm growing, baby. I'm better than who I used to be. I've been on this journey for 45 years. I had some good times as well as I have shed some tears. I'm getting better and better every day. Feeling like I'm moving in the right way. It's been a long time coming. I pay my dues. I put that work in, baby. Trying to be a better me done damn near drove me crazy. But it was worth it, baby, because I loved it, baby, and I'm a better me. I remember when I used to be a younger me. Man, if I knew then what I know now, now I'm as wise as an old owl, feeling young and gifted just like a soul child. I want to give a shout-out to my wife. I want to give a shout-out to my son, King, my daughter, Journey. I want to give a shout out to Big Brother Crump. He always come when I call. I love you, brother. I want to give a shout out to Brother Kamara. Fight your fight, black man. And I always know you're going to win. I want to give a shout out to my big brother, Farouk. Hey, man, ain't nothing like a brother. Know where you're coming from. And I always know where you're at, brother. I honor that, man. Hey, and I obey any big brother wisdom you drop down in me to make me better. I trust you and I believe you, brother. Want to give a shout out to my brother, man. Fight your fight, black man. You're inspiring me with your courageousness, man. For real, I love you, brother. Want to give a shout out to my sister, Elle. I love you, little sister. You're one of a kind. Your mind and soul is a gold mine. Y'all hold me down, man. Want to give a shout-out to my brother Trey. I got to give him a shout-out, man. They say great givers make great getters, man. That brother called me and gave me some flowers about something I gave him that I ain't even aware that I gave him. But at the same time, when he telling me that, I want to tell him what he gave me. That's so powerful, man. And I'm realizing that it's a cipher. They say, hey, what goes around comes around. I hold my head high because I don't want to miss it if I hold it down. I want to give a shout out to my brother, Junior. You already know what it is, Junior. I thank you for paying me some attention, man. If you're watching me now or on the replay, I want to hear you say and me say it was the first time you heard it today. I love you. I believe in you. You are enough. Y'all hold me down, man. Good God, oh my.